The prophet Jeremiah, chapter 31, from verse 31. The time is coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke my covenant, though I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbour or a man his brother saying, Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. And from Romans chapter 12, the first two verses. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual or reasonable act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. God made a covenant with the people of Israel, calling them to be a holy nation, chosen to bear witness to a steadfast love by finding delight in the law. The covenant was renewed in Jesus Christ our Lord in his life, work and death and resurrection. In him all people may be set free from sin and its power and united in love and obedience. In this covenant, God promises us new life in Christ. For our part, we promise to live no longer for ourselves, but for God. We meet, therefore, as nations, sorry, as generations uh, have met before us. The Methodists have met for these 260 or something years with this covenant, uh, longer actually. Uh, but we meet to renew it every year, and while sadly we can't meet, uh, in our normal way. Uh, we reflect in this time, maybe we did last week, but this is an opportunity if we haven't already to uh, just consider and commit, recommit ourselves within the covenant. Um, and so we meet uh, in this setting as we are. We meet, therefore, as generations have met before us, to renew the covenant which bind, bound them and binds us to God. Let us just pause and recognise the importance of this moment and this service. And as we come to confession, we read this powerful psalm as we can see easily noted, at least in the NIV version, that it is the words uh, of David after the, Nathan, after the prophet Nathan had uh, exposed his sin after the actions in regard uh, to Bathsheba. And he, he realised what he had done against man but against God. Have mercy on me, O God. According to your unfaithful 
love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak, and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, surely from the time of my mother it conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts, you teach me wisdom in my inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness, let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew your steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach your transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from their blood guilt, O God, the tongue who saves me and my the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem, then your righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight to you, then bulls will be offered on your altar. Amen. And so, having expressed those words, let us seek forgiveness for the sin in which we have denied God's claim upon us. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear us as we confess our sins. For the sin that has made us slow to learn from Christ, reluctant to follow him and afraid to bear the cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has caused the poverty of our worship, the formality and selfishness of our prayers, our neglect of fellowship and the means of grace and our hesitating witness for Christ. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has led us to misuse your gifts, evade our responsibilities and fail to be good stewards of your creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. For the sin that has made us unwilling to overcome evil with good, tolerant of injustice, quick to condemn, and selfish in sharing your love with others. Lord, have mercy. Lord, forgive. Have mercy on me, O God, in your constant love. In the fullness of your mercy, blot out my offences. Wash away all my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Give me the joy of your help again and strengthen me with a willing spirit. Hear the word of Christ. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, to all who truly repent, this is his gracious word. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. Thanks be to God. A reading from 
Isaiah chapter 55, the whole chapter from the message uh, version. Hey there, all who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come away, buy and eat. Come bring your drinks. Buy wine and milk. I should note that's an empty bottle, by the way. (laughs) But let's hear this. Come, buy your drinks. Buy wine and milk. Buy without money. Everything's free. Why do you spend your money on junk food? Your hard-earned cash and cotton candy. Listen to me. Listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself with only the finest. Pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I'm making an everlasting covenant with you. The same that I made with David. Sure, solid, enduring love. That's the covenant that we mark, that we speak out that we renew today and now solid in enduring love it's a it's a love relationship covenant it's not a it's not written on tablets of stone as we heard earlier and so god continues to say through isaiah i set him up as a witness to the nations made him a prince and leader of the nations and now I'm doing it to you. You'll summon nations you've never heard of and nations who've never heard of you will come running to you because of me, your God, because the Holy of Israel has honoured you. Seek God while he's here to be found. Pray to him. While he's close at hand. Let the wicked abandon their way of life. And the evil their way of thinking. Let them come back to God who is merciful. Come back to our God who is lavish with forgiveness. Come back to God who is lavish with forgiveness. I don't think the way you think. The way you work isn't the way I work. That's what God says. For as the sky soars high above the earth, so the way I work surpasses the way you work. And the way I think is beyond the way you think. Just as rain and snow descend from the skies. And don't go back until they've watered the earth. Doing their work of making things grow and blossom. Producing seed for farmers and food. For the hungry. So the words that come up out of my mouth will not come back empty handed. They'll do the work I sent them to do. They'll complete the assignment I gave them. So you'll go out with joy. You'll be led into a whole and complete life. The mountains and hills will lead the parade, bursting with song. And the trees of the forest will join the procession, exuberant with applause. No more thistles, but giant sequoias. No more thorn bushes, but stately pines. Monuments to God. Living and lasting evidence of God. Amen. And I'll just read yet another Bible verse that includes the reference to snow. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. 
Though your sins are like scarlet, they will they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. There are actually quite a few references to snow throughout the Bible. Uh, most are maybe setting the scene for, for, for something. Um, but as we read here in Isaiah 1 and in the psalm earlier, uh, we see a, a reflection of a pure snow, a complete whiteness that is reflective of the, the sense in which God completely forgives uh, sin and God's grace uh, covers over uh, our uh, our, our sin as, as his grace is so full his, his mercy is so full uh, and so complete uh, it's like maybe uh, a dirty bit of ground that when the snow uh, fell on it uh, on uh, Thursday morning at least in, in this area that just the covering of it and God break, brings all things new so let's come to God, the God of mercy, and receive that, that mercy uh, for ourselves. And as we uh, come uh, to the covenant, we uh, consider uh, the hymn that has been uh, brought with the covenant service um, for, for, for so long and that uh, has, has helped us reflect on it. Come, let us use the grace divine and all with one accord in a perpetual covenant join ourselves to Christ the Lord. Give up ourselves through Jesus' power, his name to glorify, and promise in this sacred hour for God to live and die. The covenant we this moment make be ever kept in mind. We will no more our God forsake or cast his words behind. We never will throw off his fear who hears our solemn vow. And if thou art well pleased to hear, come down and meet us now. To each the covenant blood apply, which takes our sins away, and register our names on high, and keep us to that day. Sisters and brothers in Christ, let us again accept our place within this covenant which God has made with us and with all who are called to be Christ's disciples. This means that by the help of the Holy Spirit, we accept God's purposes, God's purpose for us. And the call to love and serve God in all our life and work. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, others are difficult. Some bring honour, others bring reproach. Some are suitable to our natural inclinations and material interests. 
Others are contrary to both. In some we may please Christ and please ourselves. In others we cannot please Christ by, but by denying ourselves. Yet the power to do all these things is given to us in Christ who strengthens us. And so let us make this covenant of God our own. Let us give ourselves to him, trusting in his promises and relying on his grace. Let us pray. Eternal God, in your faithful and enduring love, you call us to share in your gracious covenant in Jesus Christ. In obedience, we hear and accept your commands. In love, we seek to do your perfect will. With joy, we offer ourselves anew to you. We are no longer our own, but yours. If you're able in the setting that you're able to, and if these words are for you, then we say them together. I'm no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things. Wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, where there is work for me and when there is none, when I am troubled and when I am at peace, your will be done when I am valued and when I am disregarded when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Gracious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. You are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. And let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen. Let us continue in some moments of silent prayer. Knowing that even though the covenant is such a, a challenge and so powerful, it, it's in the setting of a powerful, utterly compassionate, loving God who strengthens us and motivates us and renews us and who is there for us. This is the God we are committed to. And this is the God who is fully committed to us. Amen. As we have entered this covenant, not for ourselves alone, but as God's servants and witnesses, let us pray for the church and for the world. 
Loving God, hear us as we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Make us all one, that the world may believe. Inspire and lead all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Establish justice and peace among all people. Have compassion on all who suffer from any sickness, grief or trouble. Deliver them from their distress. We praise you for all your saints who have entered into your eternal glory. Bring us all to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for different parts of the world. And in our own corner of the world, we pray for our land, we pray for our government, and ask that you would guide them in all decisions that need to be made within this state, the Republic of Ireland, and for the government in Northern Ireland as well, and in the UK. Lord, give wisdom to all with responsibility for decisions that affect the public health and for all arrangements of how society functions, not least in education as well. And we ask for your blessing and your encouragement as many suffer in society. Enable those who are working within the health services. Strengthen, renew them and fill them. And teach us all, Lord God, during this time and give us strength. We pray, Lord God, uh, for uh, all things that relate to business and life in Europe and around our islands in particular uh, at this time, as the the implications of Britain's departure from the EU um, settle in, and for all leaders. And we do pray for those who are in leadership within the European Union, uh, and guide them and bless them, Lord God, uh, and lead them forward. Maybe different parts of Europe come to our mind as as we reflect here. Lord our God, our television news so easily concentrates uh, on uh, the United States and maybe we feel so attached to it. Lord God, as we think of uh, the trouble of this past week uh, within the capital We ask for your peace and your blessing uh, and for your strength for all who have leadership. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would be at work within President Trump and within President-designate Biden. Uh, And Lord, may there be renewal and reconciliation and a recognition of what it means to see your kingdom first instead of uh, other agendas. We think of many places where there are challenges and trouble and gangs and thank you for the witness of the Methodist Church uh, in in many places uh, throughout uh, the world. I was speaking to somebody uh, on Zoom the other day uh, from Paraguay. And Lord God, uh, I ask for your blessing upon Reynald, a third generation missionary in in Paraguay and for all the challenges and opportunities that are faced in Paraguay. Maybe we think of others. Lord God, our hearts are drawn to different 
African nations. Lord, who are suffering in so many ways because of the pandemic. Who are suffering misrule. Lord, maybe some of the material that is in the smartphone that this service is recording may have been sourced in Congo and maybe people have been exploited as a result. Lord, this is humbling and concerning. Lord, bring justice to our world. Bring justice for those who cry out in need. Lord, for areas that are troubled and challenges with those who, because of ethnic and religious differences, Nigeria. We thank you for the work of your, the Methodist Church in Ghana. And we thank you, Lord, that you're at work in many more places than we could imagine. Even, Lord God, in some of the most challenging regions, maybe the most challenging region of the world. Yet you are speaking through dreams and revealing yourself. Lord, Holy Spirit, come in power, come in grace in these areas. And Lord, we, our hearts break at the devastation and utter destruction and famine and disease and war and conflict in Yemen. Lord, strengthen your people, not least Sheila Donaghy from Sligo Congregation, who is there. Um, and Lord, bring peace uh, upon Palestine, Israel. Uh, at this time, uh, Lord our God, uh, wherever around the world, we could just pray for many places. And we just thank you that you are at work. Help us to serve you as we seek to honour you in our time and place. Lord our God, you have helped us by your grace to make these prayers and you have promised through Christ our Lord that when two or three agree in his name, you will grant what they ask. And I believe that also applies to this virtual setting that we agree in Jesus' name together. Answer now your servants' prayers according to their needs in this world, grant that we may truly know you, and in the world to come, graciously give us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I have to somehow get myself right in, uh, uh, to, to suit the camera here. Um, it's just been a blessing to share in, in this uh, covenant service, and it, it is challenging. Um, and uh, you know, it it renews us and challenges us for the, for the year ahead. But it is in God's strength, and let's just let's uh, recognise that He is our heavenly Father who He cares utterly for us, and it is His compassion and power that uh, enables us to be able to live for Him. And as we do, we just do not know what God could bring about. We do not know what could happen. Uh, in God's power, in God's strength. This is a challenging time, obviously. Uh, and maybe as we even look towards coming out of the pandemic, maybe even as churches, we think, oh, right, where do we go now? Uh, yes, there are challenging times, but God's church has so often thrived after these powerful challenges and changes in society. Uh, and it's thrives in settings where the marginalised and those who are sidelined uh, are, are looked out for. This is the heart of Christ. Uh, and so I believe that God is at work and I believe that there are opportunities that God has for us in 2021 and beyond. 
Uh, let's just be open in, in walking with him. I have to tell myself that because I need that encouragement. Uh, but we all need that encouragement. Uh, let's keep going uh, with, with God because uh, he is ahead of us and he knows uh, 2021. And so the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.